everybody, Arky here. So it's been 10 weeks since the Reason Rally in Washington, D.C. And at the same time that this seems like a really long time, it really hasn't been that long of a time. And I was really kind of amazed to find out that it's only been 10 weeks. So I mean, what, that's two and a half months-ish? Maybe, anyway. So yesterday at CFI, we had Teresa McBain come and speak with us. And she is right now heading up the um clergy project yeah the clergy project with the freedom from Fa Blah. freedom from religion foundation <laughs> um but uh what struck me is what the the thing i took away from her uh lecture the most please excuse me we have puppies um was that you know she came out recently i think she said she's only been out for She's only been out publicly since the Reason Rally. That's when she came out, was at the Freedom From Religion Foundation's uh, little party that they had after the Reason Rally. So some of you attended, some of you didn't. So some of you have already met her. Um, this is the first time I've actually had a chance to be in the same room with her. And she's really cool. She's a really friendly lady. Um, and she's been put through a lot of bullshit just because she's come out in defensive reason, basically. She admits that she is no longer a, uh, a believer and that she's an atheist now and it, I can see how it's really rough for her because her career her job was being a um, a minister and uh, and now now she doesn't know what she's doing um, but she's a really good speaker so I think she'll be fine um, being on the lecture circuit and being a public speaker for the clergy project um, I think she's got a real good career there, and I think maybe she might have a book in her somewhere, you know. Everybody's got a book, right? Um, but I was really dismayed at the story she was telling about how after she came out, um, her most of her family has disowned her. Um, all of her friends have basically, she says that they, they'll turn their heads and they won't talk to her when she's walking down the streets in her hometown. Um, I know that she has received death threats. Um, NPR ran a story on her, and then um, the Friday after the story ran, they read some of the um, email that they had gotten, emails and letters that they had gotten about that interview, and I know that they read some of the more mild uh, negative responses that they received, um, but they mentioned that they had received even worse, and those they weren't going to read, but they were all very hateful, just, they're just very hateful. Um, which brings me to this. So, one of our uh, one of our older members at the center got up during the Q and A session, and you know, kind of welcomed her. You know, like, hi, welcome to CFI, welcome to being an atheist, blah blah blah. And he said, I know that right now that you've only met friendly atheists. He said, but you know, we've got some real assholes in our in our ranks too. And eventually, you're going to run into them. And he says, and I hope when you do finally meet those people, I hope they don't give you a bad taste and and send you running away from um, from the communities from the CFI communities and stuff, because I don't think somebody being a jackass is going to chase somebody off from being an atheist, because I don't think you can destroy reason with jackassery, but I think what you can do is drive someone away from ever wanting to be part of um, a non-theistic community or free-thinking or secular community by being a jackass, um, especially a woman who has already endured a great deal of hardship just because she's a woman. I mean, um, one of the things McBain spoke about was how, even when she was a believer, she wanted to be a preacher, but she was raised real fundamentalist Baptist. And so her father basically told her, no, you can't do that because you're a woman. And so she had a lot of, um, she had a lot of hardships to get over from that. And then when she finally did become a minister, she basically got what were what equate to the crap jobs of ministry, um, the jobs that the male ministers wouldn't do because they could get a minister's job at a church, and so she had to do all of the other outreach, kind of the, the hard work. She had to do all of that because the men wouldn't apply for those jobs because they didn't want to do those jobs, and so those were pretty much the only things the women would do. That's not meant to be a critique on male versus female um, work ethic that was just the story as she related it so don't jump my case on that one um but she did 
she did endure a lot of um, basically sexism, which I mean, I don't know why we should be surprised. They're fundamentalist Baptists. I mean, the fact that she even managed to become a minister in that form of uh, religious indoctrination, religious group, um, is kind of a small miracle in its own right. Uh, but then to have her come to, you know, the clergy projects and the CFI and the Freedom from uh, Religion Foundation, you know, she's eventually going to run into somebody who's going to be a total jackass and intimidated by the fact that she has tits and they're going to totally try to tear her down. Um, she hasn't run into that yet, which is, I think it's great. I think that's really great because I think she's going to be a very powerful force um, going forward because she's, you know, she's got that religious background, so she knows how to relate to people who are in a religious background. Um, and she knows how to deal with the hate from people with a religious background and she knows how to be compassionate towards people who are having um, questions, especially people who are clergy, who are questioning, you know, whether they believe it or not, or if they ever believed, or if it was just, you know, this grand delusion that they fed themselves. You know, I mean, never having been in a religious situation like that, I, I can't really relate. And I told her that. And I said, I'm really impressed with you, though, because you, the, the, the stories that she told and the reasons that she gave, these are reasons and thoughts that I don't see people in religion, coming out of religion, making until much, much, much later um, in their deconversion. Um, so I was really impressed with her because she sounded like someone who hadn't been raised religious, as, as I guess what I'm trying to get at, um, except for the whole, like, she understands... Whereas I have issues understanding religious people, you know, she is a religious person. She's still getting over that. So, you know, she's got that. I guess I'm kind of jealous because she's got that, that dual side. Like, she's, she's capable of being a non-theist and being rational and being reasonable. And at the same time, she completely gets where people is coming from with the whole Jesus, God, religion thing. Um, she was talking about how when she was young, it was kind of melded into her brain that doubt equaled lack of faith and that was a sin and it, like the first thing that went through my head was I don't believe in sin so I don't understand I don't understand what that does to a person when you walk up to someone and you're like oh that's a sin I know that a lot of people like cringe they say they cringe inwardly and they fear for hell and their soul and I'm like I don't get it <laughs> okay it's a sin woo ray sin um, but she does get it, so she can, she can kind of relate to people, and she can be a little bit more mindful of the things that she says, whereas I feel like sometimes I say things that are maybe a little less compassionate than, they, than I could be, only because, to me, it makes logical sense. Um, why would you believe that? That's silly. Well, you know, if you're raised in that, it's, it's not so silly, and I forget that sometimes. Um, but anyway, I was just really moved by Teresa McBain. If you haven't had a chance to see any of her YouTube videos, um, she's not a YouTubist. There's just a lot of videos of her on YouTube. Um, if you haven't had a chance to hear any of the podcasts or the news broadcasts she's been on, I, I highly recommend looking her up, um, maybe sending her some support mail because I know she's getting a lot of hate mail um, and just kind of, I don't know, welcome her into the community. Don't be a dick. Um, I don't know. So anyway, uh, so keep an eye on her. I really think she's going to be a mover and shaker here in the next year. She's already met with all of the big names. So, you know, she's, she's already, she's already there. It's just going to be interesting to see, to watch her maintain that position and maybe go farther with it than somebody who wasn't her could go, if that made sense. Anyway, so Okay, so the whole 10 weeks thing. Yeah, it's been 10 weeks since the Reason Rally, and uh, I think this is video number three for my channel, and I'm not apologizing for it, um, mainly because I, I don't know what I wanted to do with this channel when I started it, and so every time I think of a video idea, it's mainly just a rant of some sort, and I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, I gotta get it off my chest, rawr! And uh, so I think for a while, this is probably just going to be a ranting channel until I can find a better way to focus, um, focus, I just focus, I guess, 
this is like with my Archie Fantasies channel, that's got a focus. I mean, it's very specific. We're debunking archaeology, we're debunking bad archaeology, using history, archaeology, and anthropology. Um, and so we're going after a, a specific pseudoscience in a specific field. And so it's very easy to stay focused on that um, only because it's such a narrow field. Here, I kind of opened myself up to a whole lot of stuff, and it's very. I don't know. I just. I, I think I. I don't think I defined it enough uh, for it to be useful, and so I'm afraid that I'm not being useful, and that makes me like, oh, I don't want to make videos. People are gonna think I'm just stupid, which I don't care if you think I'm stupid or not. Whatever. Um, but so. Do look forward to a bunch of more ranting videos because that's pretty much all I've got in me right now and probably, I don't know, maybe in a year or so I'll actually start to focus maybe topically or maybe I'll have some more, you know, science focused videos like I do on my Archie channel, you know, with citations and, you know, facts and things that aren't just me ranting. Because um, you're completely allowed to, dis to disagree with my opinions because they're my opinions, but when you kind of want to disagree with my facts, I get a little testy because, well, facts are facts and I can't change that. Anyway, so I will see you guys later. And, um, and yeah, so check out Teresa McBain. Um, I don't know, let us know what you've been doing 10 weeks after the Reason Rally. I mean, had, has anything changed for you? Are you still like doing the same thing that you've always been doing? And um, look forward to more rants. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.